In this video, I'm going to talk about the latest update to Uni Database. The first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the built in ASCII support. So you're going to have uh, right inside the Unity, you're going to be able to access all of the ASCII characters. And I'm also going to introduce the, the new built-in documentation system. And everything is context sensitive. So if you're working with a column that contains text, you're going to be able to see all the operations you can perform on the text. If you're working with pictures, if you're working with audio, if you're working with prefabs, it doesn't matter what you're working with. The documentation is going to be specific to what you're working with. You're going to be able to create, read, update, and delete, and several other operations. So what exactly are we going to cover in this video? This video is designed for JavaScript. In a later video, I'm going to have C Sharp. You're going to be able to see the inline documentation. You're going to be able to get one cell of data using the inline documentation. You're going to be able to get one column. You're going to be able to update the cell. And I'm going to show you how to add a new row. And I'm also going to show you guys how to delete an existing row. So let's switch over to Unity. We're going to go ahead and open Uni Database. In this video, I'm not going to show you guys how to create a database because I'm just showing you guys how to use the inline documentation. So I'm going to open up something here. Text. NID. And I'm going to use the new feature I added here, which is the quick open. So I'm just going to drag it into here. And I'm able to see everything that's in there. So now let's say for example I want to get dog. So I just click on it. And now I'm going to see all the ASCII characters. Let's say for example I want to add an ASCII character. I just go ahead and I click on it and I'm able to add it. Let's say for example I want to add this one here or I want to add a different one. So I just click on what I want to add and that's all there is to it. So I'm not going to update it here. I'm just going to save it for fun. Now let's take a look at some code here. The biggest complaint a lot of people have when working with databases is, hey, how do I get Where's the documentation? Where's the documentation? So when you're working with, uh, so when you're a busy developer and you're working with databases, you want to have quick access to the documentation. You don't want to waste a whole bunch of time going on remote websites or looking at a whole bunch of different pages in the PDF file. You want to have quick access to the code so that you can get back to making games. Go ahead and open this 
new file that I just created. Now I'm also going to save this here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the JavaScript example here. So we're going to take advantage of the quick open feature here. So I'm going to drag it here and drop it and it automatically opens. Now let's say for example I want to be able to get Henry. So which is in column 0 and row 0. So I just click on get this. Since I'm working with uh, JavaScript, you can see here, copy here for JavaScript. So all I really have to do is come here, highlight it, copy, and after I copy it, pretty much I can close it. And I can just switch over. To the JavaScript. I can close this here. I can switch over to the JavaScript and I can put the example in the start. And that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to put a debug statement. so that I can see what I'm getting. And now we're going to hit play. Some of you guys might get this message, so this is all deliberate. unknown identifier database so pretty much when you're working with a database the first thing you need is you need to set up the database so uh, how easy is it to set up the database var working with Then you just have to set it up as a text asset. Now you wait for it to compile and the error is going to go away. In this example we're just going to attach the database to the camera but in your specific project you would attach the file to whatever you're using. And if you guys remember, we were working with the text and ID. So we just drag it here to the database. And when we go ahead and hit run, going to see here get name equals Henry but now let's say for example I don't want to get Henry I want to get dog column 0 row 1 so now I'm going to have to say column 0 row 1. I don't even have to copy this again because I already know. I'm just trying to get row 1 instead of row 0. So I can just come here and just change. See here this is 
the column and this is the row I'm just trying to get row 1 so I just change this to 1 but now look at what's happening here it's gonna have to recompile and after it's finished recompiling then if I hit run I see here that I'm able to get the row 1 instead of row 0. Now let's say for example you don't want to have to compile every time. You have a good idea that hey for this example I'm only gonna need column 0 but I want to be able to change different rows at runtime without having to recompile the script. So now we can just create a variable here. Then we're going to call this row number. Going to set it as an integer. Then we're going to pass it in. and now it's going to compile and now let's also say that you want this the name to show up in the inspector so that you can have access to it in update so we just come here and copy this After you copy this, you can just go ahead and come here. And we're going to comment out the debug statement. Now it's going to compile. We just have to wait for the compilation to finish. And now when it's finished compiling, if I want to get row number 0, I just hit run and I'm able to get row number 0. And if you look here, you're going to see row number 0. Now if I want to get row number 2, I mean row number 1 like we did before, we just come here, I hit run, and I'm getting row number one. If I want to get row number two, I just change this to two. And just like that, I'm getting row number two. Now let's take a look at some of the error messages that you guys may encounter. Let's say, for example, you try to get something that doesn't exist like row number 20. We remembered earlier that we only had 10 rows, but what what's going to happen if we try to get something that doesn't exist like row number 20? Let's hit run. And you're going to see here that you're going to get a very specific error message. Let's take a look at this error message. So it's saying column number Now it says here, let's take a look at the specific error message. It's saying row number 20 does not exist in the database. And it says database text and ID only contains 10 rows from index 0 to 9. So as long as your index is between 0 and 9, get what's in there. But if you try to get anything beyond 9, then it's not going to come up with anything. 
So let's test the theory here. Let's go all the way up to 9. And now let's hit run after we clear this message. And you see here that we're able to get Henry. And the same example will work for integers, work for pictures, work for audio clips and prefabs. And in future videos, I'm going to cover all of those examples. So I just wanted to give you guys a preview of how easy it is to work with the new and improved Uni database. This looks like a good place to stop.